All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Haraka, Kwadash. Double honors to all the elders and the apostles of great Musa and teaching us the truth. Sanitations to all the Akim, the Afwakim, and the Wafbanyim. And Shalom to the house of David. So, do we have what it takes to get to receive the crown of life? That's the question. And the inspiration of this video come from. Anthony Joshua, who became victorious in his last fight against Andy Ruiz, and he showed um, showed strength of character. He showed a lot of strength of character. He showed high intelligence, a boxing IQ, and we're gonna we're gonna let somebody who knows a little about boxing break some of it down, because um, there's a moral of the story to this. Do we have what it takes? Without further ado. Well, well, how do you compare the Joshua pre uh, Ruiz to the Joshua rematch Ruiz and going forward? Has he? I give him. A, I give him a lot of credit. I was very. I was. I was very, very impressed. Impressed with how he handled himself and how he stuck to his game plan. It was very impressive because that's hard to do. And and you talk to any fighter, it's hard to to follow a game plan for 12 rounds and stay consistent with that game plan. And he didn't take many chances because he wanted to go out there and win the fight. That was his their mentality and it showed in, 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 in the game plan. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. I give, give him and um, Rob all the credit in the world. They deserve it. Props to him. And guess what? I was one of the motherfuckers that was picking against him. I picked Ruiz. Yeah, this is um, Leonard Ellaby, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, giving his two cents. And he's just going to break a little bit of the the last fight of Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. You know, I'm interested to hear what he's got to say. And we're going to hit one and two scriptures to really get the understanding and apply it in our spiritual fight. Because we're in a spiritual battle. Day in and day out, we're in this spiritual battle. Battle. So, do we have what it takes to get the crown and the victory? But I didn't expect Ruiz to come in as heavy as he did, and you know all of that. Not taking anything away from Joshua, but again, I was wrong, and it's okay. Did Ruiz blow it? It was shocking in the post-fight interviews of him saying he wasn't training and he put on this weight, being unfocused. But see, people ain't, ain't see. This, this is what I'm saying. People, it's like I'm understanding that it, it from definitely from a fighter perspective, it's disrespectful. Like how you don't, you got the, you you got the biggest fight of your life, and you don't prepare properly. But people ain't been in that situation. When you get money, man, it's different. It's different. Unless you've been in that situation and making millions of dollars, you don't know how you gonna handle a situation. You, you know what I'm saying? You you come from... Yeah, Andy Ruiz, he, um, he didn't come in. He didn't look prepared when it comes to the weight. But his um, philosophy was that if he can do it once with a whole lot of f fat and fl uh, flab on him, he can do it again. But he didn't make the adjustment. And we know Anthony Joshua made the necessary adjustment to get the victory. So there's a saying, you know, if you can't you can't do the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results that's the definition of insanity Anthony Joshua learned and Andrew Ruiz now was the one who was complacent Andy Ruiz now it was Anthony Joshua who was complacent in the first fight and then in the second fight it was Andy Ruiz who was complacent um, this man was sleep this man was living with his mom in his mama's house and then you go out and then you you, you you go out and and get a fight, a short notice fight that nobody's expecting you to win. And you go out there and you knock the heavyweight champion of the world out. And then all of a sudden you you you, you get all this instant fame and, and this status and a bunch of money with it. Come on man. <laughs> you can't it, it's like so for me and, and you know, people who come from the mud, you know what I'm saying? It's like and to reach the top. It's like, I, you, you know, I can feel what, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it's like Floyd had a different kind of approach, though. Floyd was from the gutter, but he had a different kind of mindset. 
It was like, let me tell you how Floyd's mindset was. I remember the very first big fight we ever had. Um, we go, so fights obviously on Saturday night. So we, we all are making plans to do something, you know. Had a long camp. He said, uh, 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 he said, we ain't done shit. We back in the gym on Monday. We didn't cash the check. That was always his mentality. This is a, I don't like to curse a lot, but this is a dude that, you know, he's seven, 800 million in, and he waking up out the satin sheets. Ain't telling nobody nothing. He out there on that road. It's a different kind of mentality. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's different. Floyd was always wanted to be the best. And the money never mattered. No money, because with greatness, when you go out there and doing your thing, the money going to come. The money going to come. See, a lot of these fighters are focused on, you know, this and that. You got to focus out there on your craft, how you can improve your craft, how you can become better. You know what I'm saying? You get in big fights knowing what it's like to be in championship fights. You know what I'm saying? Floyd's for well over 26 world champions. And again, but he's always had the mentality that he never made a dime in his life. That's how he trained. That's how he trained. You got to run him out the gym. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like he take his job. He's always taking his job very, very seriously. That man don't play when it comes to his job. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they see all the flashy this and the, this and that. And it's like, but when it comes time to work, come on, man. That man take his job very. And nobody's ever came. No, no, no young lady, his family, his kids. Nobody's ever came in the middle. He'll, t he'll stop his kids in a heartbeat. He said, look, look. I gotta, I'm doing my job, I gotta do this. That's his mentality. He don't not play when it comes to his job. He take his job very, very seriously. It's hard for a guy who has a career as long as his to stay that consistent about his job for that long. Usually when the retirement announcement comes, the next time you see him, they're a good 30, 40 pounds heavier than they were. This is not the case. Has he been still in the gym? When retirement came, he is stayed he still in the gym. Stayed he, st he stayed in the gym because guess what? He takes great pride in, in how he presents himself. You know how he looks in his clothes, and he's a professional. You know what I mean? He's a, he's been a great athlete, and he and he's always mindful. He he's always walked around at his fighting weight. I I've never seen that man weigh 160 pounds a day in my life. You you, you see what I'm saying? That's been his mentality. Been his mentality regardless. And, and the, what's been more impressive to me when you got a chance to look back is that he's the only fighter that I know that gets in the ring with on, guys on a consistent basis that I weigh him by 20 pounds on fight night. And then they say, well, why he ain't knock somebody out? Come on, man. You're kidding me. You're kidding me right now. You, you know, you're fighting a guy that's, in some cases, you, you look back at all the big fights. You know, there's only been a handful of guys that... Weighed around, meaning actually weighed around the same thing that he did. Judas won, Pacquiao's won. It's maybe one or two. Everybody else got him by 18, some cases 25 pounds on fight night. Oscar De La Hoya already fighting at, the, at, at already fighting him at 54, and and you see him on fight night, he's got Floyd by 21 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Floyd lost a pound coming into the. You, you know what I'm saying? How you do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For the night before. Well, it's clearly not money. And, and if it's not legacy, he's got the record that he always wanted. What is it that brings Floyd out of retirement again? You got to ask him that question. But you know the answer. He's not that here. Question. You got to <laughs> ask him that question. Yeah. What, what do you think would have to happen for him to retire once and for all? Floyd... Floyd Mayweather is a man of many, many thoughts and, and, and many things. You never know. One day he wakes up and, and the next day he feel one way. One day he feel this way and the next day he feel another way. You know, that's what makes him, that's his makeup. Makes him who he is. And what about you? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that with Floyd. Uh, I would say he's, um, he's what you call a chameleon yeah, in the ring and, you know, Possibly out the ring too. A chameleon is one of them reptiles that changes, knows how to change colour and adapt to its surroundings and adapt to its background. Chameleon. But anyway, the moral of the story of this is Anthony Joshua, that was um, the CEO, Leonard Ellaby, 
uh, the boxing um, promoter Mayweather's promotions Leonard Ellaby so anyway we want the moral of this story the moral of the story is do we have what it takes to receive the crown of life man do we have what it takes look at this Anthony Joshua in his first fight and uh, Andrew Ruiz did he learn his lesson and this is the second one he won he won by um uh, he won more or less every round unanimous decision over uh, uh, Andrew Ruiz who be, in this time it was Andrew Ruiz who was complacent he didn't he all that money went to his head he believed he can come and do the same thing what he did to Anthony Joshua in the first fight which was to blow him out mid you know through the mid rounds maybe around the seventh round he just feel, believed they can just keep chasing him and chasing him chasing him he, he eventually get to him but the, what happened was Andy Anthony Joshua kept him at the end of the jab, gave him different looks, went downstairs to the body, uh, downstairs back upstairs, you know downstairs to make him drop his guard and then upstairs, where he was um, un where he wasn't uh, defending himself, so he just kept on switching, switching it up, switching it up, downstairs upstairs, gave him angles, kept moving around the ring. So it's what you call, um, uh, he made the, the necessary adjustments. But let's get to the scripture, man, because there's a moral of the story, man. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall unto mischief. A just man falls seven times. This is Anthony, this is Anthony Joshua in his first fight. And that's what happens sometimes. That that could happen. We know it happened to a, with a lot of prophets, former prophets, which they're back here. And the key with um, you might I say comes to mind the warrior um, King David comes to mind. You know he he made his errors. You know made many errors, but the most had to reprove him and get him back on track. And he also was pursued by King Saul. And he was a fugitive, you know, and that was, um, there was um, a lot to learn. He, he learned a lot from that experience, you know. Man in the flesh, and a righteous man foolish seven times, but he get back up again, man. And that's what you call learning from your mistakes. Because if you didn't learn from your, your mistake, you wouldn't get back up again. And when he got back up again, this is Anthony Joshua, I'm using this as the example he became victorious because he made the necessary adjustments he learned from his mistakes and the saying is um, if you keep on doing the same thing over and over again it's a definition of sanity to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results but righteous man learns from his mistakes let's get to another scripture because um, he made the necessary adjustments and Looking at that characteristics is not far actually to, to make those necessary adjustments to win a battle means you might have to be sometimes be be like a, a chameleon and I looked up that the reptile <laughs> the reptile man uh, some of us are fascinated with reptiles they are and they can be fascinating you know they're all the creation of the most high a chameleons <laughs> chameleon he says are a distinctive and highly specialized clade of old word lizard highly specialized clad of old word lizard with 202 species 202 species described as of june the 15th these species can in a can came come in a range of colors and many species have the ability to change colors Million man, why do the reptiles change their colours? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, re I'm relating this to being a, being adaptable and adjusting in the fight game. Scientists believe that chameleons change colour to reflect their moods. By doing so, they send social signals to others. Chameleons, for example 
Darker colors tend to mean a chameleon is angry. Lighter colors might be used to attract mates. Chameleons. Let's see if I can get something out of this one. Can all lizards change colors? What is the color of the blood? What do lizards turn blue? What snake can change colors? Which animal can... <laughs> That's really what I want from that. They they usually change colors. Why do lizards turn blue? Scientists have discovered a living uh, thermometer in the Azor Arizona desert in the form of a lizard, which change color as the temperature rises and fo and falls. According to the new scientist, according to the new scientist uh, magazine, the male stripped tree lizard Arizona aratus these words, um, I'm butchering these words, so lucky. Yeah. Paradoxically, turns bright blue in the heat, but is green when it is cold. So there you have it, man. They adapt to their surroundings, they adapt to the uh, colours around them, behind them, in the background. And they adapt to the temperatures. So they're adaptable. And... That's the, that's a key to being a good boxer. Floyd Mayweather was known to being able to adapt and adjust to anybody he fought. He fought them differently, and this is what Anthony Joshua did. He got beat up because he came in the ring with a with a wrong attitude, with an arrogant attitude, a, pr a complacent attitude. Being that he was able to go in all his fights and knock out his opponents, and he thought he was going to do the same to Andy Ruiz. He looked at him saw you know he was out of shape he didn't believe that there was a there was another serpent you know a chameleon also actually he came in um he he beguiled him he made him lower his guard he befriended him he wanted um, pictures with him and anthony joshua was beguiled and he fell victim to somebody who outsmarted him outside the ring because there's many tactics you can use outside the ring you can try and intimidate your your opponents outside the ring before you fight them by talking big and smack talking saying i'm going to knock your ass out you don't you're beneath me or you can be gold him and flatter them and that's the tactics that um andrew Ruiz used in the first fight he flattered he, he flattered him used flattery on anthony joshua and he came across as a real nice soft guy literally soft and friendly and then when he got in the ring he, he bit him you know just like the serpent that's what the serpent does so he he was very very subtle but he he didn't have a chance in the second fight because Anthony Joshua sussed him out realized he just has to keep him at the end of the jab keep moving because uh, Andrew Ruiz was overweight, he ain't got fast feet, fast hands, but not fast feet. He he, he realised, yeah, this guy would never keep up with me. And you can see in his attitude that he was confident. You know, as he said, he would he would be Andrew Ruiz ten times out of ten, with the exception of the one that he lost to. But let's get another scripture because you know all you got to do is when when you really want to learn from something sometimes you look at sometimes you just look at the mistakes people make you know we can learn from our own mistakes and we can learn from others mistakes complacency is a big big um is a weakness it's not a strength so do we have what it takes all right let me let me go to the prime example prime example in Hebrews because you've got to stay you know as as Leonard Ellaby was saying Floyd Mayweather was no joke when it come down to business he not he did like nice things and money but when it came down to business that was priority women were were not priority over his business his own children were not even his priority over his when it came to serious business because he wanted that victory in the ring so our example now we're going to go to is Hebrews 12, 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also, Yehoshua himself is our example, 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily, which doth so easily beseed us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Do we have what it takes? Looking unto Yehoshua, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the, endured the cross, despising shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yehoah, of Yehoah, of God, it says there. For those who Christians that call him, ignorantly call him God. So we have an example ourselves, man, to look at. For, for consider him that endured such cont contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weird, be weird and faint in your minds. For we consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weird and faint in your minds. Yeah, man. That's our example there. But we've learned from this mistake of Anthony Joshua he learned from his mistake and we can learn from his mistake not to become complacent but to stay hungry you know as um as the CEO was just breaking down uh, Leonard Ellaby to stay hungry that is how Mayweather was undefeated 50, 50 fights and 50 wins and he's, uh, he's, he's proud of that and the example we want to look at is Yahweh Yahushai to stay hungry. James 1 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Right. Put, put all the temptations aside. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted ne neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn out drawn away of his own lust and enticed then when lust conceiveth it bringeth forth sin and sin when it's finished bringeth forth death do not hear my beloved brethren every good gift and every perfect present Every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is not, with whom is no vulnerableness, neither shadow of turning. That's it, man. Every good gift and every perfect present is from above, or, any, or every perfect gift from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is vulnerable, which there is no vulnerability, neither shadow of turning. So we got this example, man. Yehovah, Yehovah, man. He was blessed because he endured temptation. Yeah, when he was tried, and he because he resisted the temptation, he received the crown of life. And we want to be victorious, just like in this war of battles in the spiritual world. This spiritual battle, we want to be victorious. And if we slip up, if we slip up, we get back up again. And we have to make the adjustments, keeping our the enemy at the end of a jab, <laughs> you know, slipping and moving, you know, because this is a spiritual battle, and we got Yahweh Wai Yahweh Lord willing, we're in that number to be blessed of Yahweh Wai Yahweh to endure just like Yahweh Wai Yahweh to keep. So we keep sending up them prayers, you know. As I said in my previous video, there is death and life in the power of the tongue. Keep sending up those blessings and those prayers and the fasting and the videos, you know. Lord willing, we can edify in all these different ways, the Akim. And we know we have the best example. We have the best example to look at. Uh, we're going to get another precept in Philippians 4. Wherefore, my brethren, deadly beloved and long for my I longed for my joy and crown to stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. 
Yeah, therefore, my brethren, dead, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. You know, to stand fast, man. Keep him, keep him set before us as the great and the best example. This is going to be the last one to end of the video. Philippians 2, 6 says, Who being in the form of God, Yehovah, Yehovah, Shai, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took up him, took up him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, and being and when and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even as death of the cross. He found himself fashioned as a man, he humbled himself to remain humble, man, in his truth, to remain hungry and humble. Yeah, if we're going to receive that crown of life, to remain hungry and humble. He became obedient unto death, even as a death of death of the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yehovah Wai Yehovah Shai, every knee should bow of things in the heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. So yes, man, do we have what it takes to receive the crown of life? Lord willing, Lord willing we do. You know, how, we, how do we know? Just try and do your best at what you what you can do to reach your potential. Keep putting out these videos to try and make them as edifying as possible. The prayers, you know, and the curses. Not to forget, this is a spiritual warfare. And we want to be victorious. And to give all praises and glory to Yehovah, Yehovah Shai, man. In every way we can. You know, on the highways and the byways. So that was um, what I learned there was a moral of the story and sometimes you look around you can learn you know from other people's mistakes as well as your own you know and you can give praises to the most high and I pray that the this video was edifying I want to just say all praises to you about Shemir Oshai, Brokotai Hoa, Brokotai Hoa Shai, Brokotai Hoa, Brokotai Hoa Shai, Kala Yehoa about Shemir Oshai and Shalak round to Allah Wicked and whatever they plan to do against us, what they've done, past, present and future, may it fall upon their own heads. Shalom.